Hey guys, it's Shorty from Shorty's Complete DJ Method. And in this video, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the collection screen on Mixed in Key. So here's the collection screen and we already imported and analyzed a bunch of tracks in the previous video. So now let's walk through all the features. So the first thing you might wanna do is load a track into the song viewer up here, the song player. And there's a few different ways you can do that. You can either double click on the song, so I'm just gonna double click here. And there you see it pops up and we see the sound wave. You can also right click on a song or control click if you're on a Mac and then select display song in viewer. So we covered this a little bit before, but just to dig a little bit deeper, here's the sound wave. Here we have some cue points that the software created automatically. I didn't create these, they were automatically created when I analyzed the track. And it picks certain points in the song so it finds the very beginning, which is interesting too because it's pretty accurate. If you notice, there's a space here at the beginning. So it found the beginning right there. Whereas here, if I load this track, that first cue point is at the very beginning because the song starts at exactly the beginning of the track. And then right here, you'll see more cue points. And these cue points are based on uh, drastic changes in the song. So for instance, uh, this is an instrumental song, but if we had a vocal song, say a hip hop song that had traditional choruses and verses, it would also know where those are and mark those cue points. So it would mark the choruses for you and the verses and the outro sometimes. So it just depends on what it sees in the track. Uh, here it added a key point through the latter half of the song. So this is probably considering it the outro since this is a fairly short outro right there. So they're just extending it a bit, but it's pretty cool and interesting to see how it automatically detects them. Then you'll also see with the sound wave, they call this an X-ray sound wave, which is an interesting idea. I really like it. So you can see the melody which is the transparent looking shape right here. And then the beats, which are the lines right here. So we see where the beats fall and where the melody is. And then you can see the melody peeking through the beats right here. And then down below, we have sort of an energy reading of the track as it flows. So the energy is lower right here at the beginning. And then it peaks right here when the first beat drops. And then as it's dropping, the energy drifts lower a little bit. And then again with another change, but it's slightly lower because it's going into sort of a breakdown, whereas this is higher. It's going into the main part of the song, the beat. And then here we have another peak, which is actually the highest peak. So this seems to be the most energetic part of the song, according to Mixed in Key. And that is this ladder beat right here. And then it trails off to really low down to the end. Now you'll also see as we hover over the sound wave, it has it separated into sections based on those cue points. So we can play from any sort of section. We don't have to click on a cue point or anything like that. You just hover over and play that section. And then to stop it, you just go down here and hit the play pause button. You can also of course play the track with this button. And then you can also stop it using your keyboard. So what I just did was hit my space bar on the keyboard and it automatically stopped it. And I can press play with the space bar as well. So down below the audio playing area, the sound wave area, we have these play controls. So we already talked about the play button. That's really self-explanatory. And then we also have next track and previous track. So if you wanna jump to the next track in your list, you just hit this button and it loads the next track. And then if you wanna to go to the previous track, you just hit that button right there over to the left and it loads the previous track. And then right next to that, we have the key. So it just shows you what the key is for this particular track. So it's 4A, which is a minor key, which we learned earlier. And then next we have the energy. So energy is a rating that mixed in key gives each track based on what they think the energy level of the track is. So. Right here we have six, so I guess it's sort of middle of the road according to Mixing Key, and that sort of makes sense with this because it's a dope beat and there's some grimy sounds and stuff, but it it's just like a sort of a groove rather than there's not a lot of builds or high energy sounding stuff in it. So just to give you an example of what it thinks energy six is. <laughs> So 
So it's a darker track, but it's just like a, just a dope beat. So it considers it six and it rates it from one to 10. So if you look at these tracks right here, everything is pretty much over six. Yeah, so we have six through eight. So just to give you an example of a higher energy track, what it might consider a higher energy track, I'm going to double click this. And let's go to the main part. Yo. So as you can hear, there's a lot more going on in that track and the energy is higher. So that's a really cool way to categorize your tracks. And then when you import them into your DJ software or if you're just using traditional vinyl or something like that and you're writing this information on your actual records, it can sort of help you formulate your sets even more strategically. So you are not only doing it based, of course, on BPM and now key, but also you can do it by energy level just by looking at it. Now you're probably gonna know your music better than anyone, or at least you should. So hopefully even more than a piece of software. But if you just wanna glance at it and be like, oh, I need to bump the energy up. Let's uh, go up to eight or nine, or let's go crazy and go to 10. That's another way. So you can sort of sort them by energy and go up the ladder just like that if you want. Next we have the artist name and the song title. And then next to that we have the elapsed time of the track. So right now it is at one minute and one second just right here. And then right here is the total time of the track. So this track is four minutes and 19 seconds. We can also zoom out uh, and it's actually fully zoomed out right now so that didn't do anything. Uh, or zoom in by clicking this right here. So you can get pretty far with that, which is really cool. And then, out again. Next we have the add cue button right here. So you can click this to add a cue point. However, it's grayed out on this track because we already have all eight cue points set automatically. So in order to add a new one, we would have to delete one. Uh, but you can see right here, if we open this track, now we have it set right here and we can click this button and add a cue point. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper into adding cue points in a later video, so check that out if you're interested. And next up we have the piano button, which opens the piano roll. And here you can see an actual piano uh, with the actual keys. So 4A, which is what this track is keyed at, actually translates to F on a piano keyboard. So you can press the key to actually hear it. And you can also use the piano roll to check the keys if you want. So say you aren't sure if Mixed and Key got it right, you can check the song by playing it and pressing keys as you go to see if any of the other keys fit better. And I'm gonna go into this a little deeper in a later video, uh, but this is where it is. And then we also have the translation to minor chords right here. So if I press this, you'll hear the full chord and you'll also see it right here. And then the major chords. So that's F major, and this is F minor. And then next we have the volume control. So this just controls the volume of how loud or soft it plays in mixed and key the tracks. And then below that, we have this little prompt area that says make your music sound better. So it will tell you how many clipped peaks are in what files and how many files have clipped peaks. Uh, so clipped peaks are like, these are going all the way to the zero point and it's it's detecting that some of them are clipped, which most songs typically go, you know, when they're mastered, they are normalized up to the zero point and some peaks end up being clipped. So if you would like to improve the audio of your songs or add dynamic range, you can use their software called Platinum Notes and it will adjust them automatically. So if you just wanna, if you have Platinum Notes installed, you can just click this button right here and it will open Platinum Notes. If you don't have Platinum Notes, which I don't, then you can just click it and it will open up the web page where you can check out the Platinum Notes software and see if it's something you're interested in. Now, if you don't have Platinum Notes and you aren't interested in getting it or using it or whatever, then you can just click Dismiss and it will remove that prompt. 
Next, we have all the sortable categories for your tracks, which are on this line right here. And you can just scroll over to see all of them. And so we have cover art. None of these have cover art right now. However, you can add cover art, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a later video. And then we have, of course, the artist's name, the title of the track, if an album is associated with it. And this is just all the stuff that's in the ID3 tags of the song. And then when you analyze them, it's adding the key result to the ID3 tag. So it's added to that information of the song. And then we also have the energy. So we talked about that earlier. And then the tempo or the BPM. We have how many cue points have been added or already exist in the song. So say you have a track that you've added cue points in Serato and you bring it in here. It will also reflect how many cue points are already added. So whatever's already embedded into the song file. Then we have clipped peaks. So that was sort of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, with the Platinum Notes software, this shows you how many, and it has many, many, many ones. <laughs> but that's pretty typical of most dance music. They tend to normalize to zero and clip some peaks. So next we have the volume level. So this shows the dB range of the tracks. And then next we have status, which is referring to the analysis status. So when the track is analyzing, remember we see that little line on the track and it shows how much has been analyzed until it finishes. And then here is the date added. So we just added them all today. And then here we have the genre. And then right here we have grouping. So if you have any grouping information assigned to the track, so say, say in Serato, you can add grouping, for example, they have a grouping column. And so you can say old school or, you know, say you're grouping your hip hop tracks, you have um, you know, trappy sounding hip hop tracks, or you have old school classic tracks, you know, 80s hip hop, 90s hip hop, whatever you're grouping, whatever you put in that information that'll show up right here. And then the year, if you have any year information of the track that shows up right here as well. And then down below the track list, we have how many songs are here. Of course, you can scroll here with the scrolly thingy. And then below all of that is a feedback form. So you can actually give feedback to Mixed and Key directly from the software, which I think is really cool. So you just type in your feedback and click send feedback right here. So let's go back up to the column categories right here. And you can sort your track list just by clicking on one of these. So say I wanna sort by key, I would just click key result, and then it just automatically sorts the key by number low to high and high to low. So we have 11 here all the way to 1A down here. We can sort by energy. So any of these are sortable just by clicking these tabs. Now you can also filter your tracks in the track list by key. And the way you do that is by clicking on this cool little Camelot wheel over here. So say I only want the 4A tracks to show up, just click that. And here we have only four A tracks. And then just to get rid of that, you just hit clear and it goes back to the main track listing. So you can sort by any key. Here we have one eight A and, and here also notice this track is a good example of a track that changes key within the track. So mixing key also detects if there is a key change and this track actually changes or it blends between both keys. So we can either take this as an 8A track or a 9A track, which is interesting. And so the way that shows up is just with a little slash in between. And then last we have search right here. So all you gotta do is just type in what you wanna search for. So say I want only masher tracks to show up. Uh, you just type in a portion of the name and it starts searching it automatically. You don't have to press enter or anything like that. So we have three masher tracks and then a masher remix. So it searches every field. And then if you want to uh, delete the search and go back to the playlist, just click the X and the track list will populate in full again. So now there are additional features in the collection area and you can access those by right clicking on any track or control clicking if you're on a Mac. And then you have this menu that displays right here. So if you wanna learn more about these features, check out the next video.